Hi, my name is Pinky Gelani and you are watching Pinky TV. Welcome to What Women Want Online. This is the show where you get to meet incredible people who share stories of hope, resilience and excellence. We are filming at The Social House and these conversations are brought to you by SBM Bank and Safaricom. If you are a person who likes creativity and you want to win in that game, then this episode is just for you. A household name in Kenya, because of her hard work in the fashion industry, Carol Kinoti is not just another fashion designer. She's a passionate woman who's been able to pave the way for many others who will follow in her footsteps. With almost two decades in the industry, Carol has managed to put Kenya on the fashion map by allowing fashion to be more accessible, sustainable and ethical. She has dressed household names and also given herself tirelessly to numerous social projects. She's a loving mother and a force to be re And she's here today with us, Carol Kinoti. Hi, Pinky. Hi. <laughs> you look nice. I, I know. I'm, I'm wearing a Carol Kinoti, by the way. I know. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, it's personalized. Mm -hmm. It's actually appropriate because we're in the July weather, which yeah. is what we call our African winter. Yeah, that is true. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, these are really awesome. And it's yeah. a fun dress it's that I can wear with it's a, it's a cool booties. blanket. Yeah, it's a cool <laughs> blanket, actually. You, you can actually look cool in a blanket. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, thanks to Carol Kinoti. <laughs> yeah. I would not have thought of this. I know. That's why it's a Carol Kinoti. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. two, two decades in, mm -hmm. in, in this industry, Carol, and you are um, somebody I've worked with as a model. For long. Yes. <laughs> You've evolved quite a bit. Okay. I've evolved. You've evolved quite <laughs> a bit. But so yes. have you. Yeah. It's amazing yes. to see your brand yes. go from strength mm -hmm. to strength. Because, you know, like I say, you're not just a fashion designer. You're so much more than that. Yeah. And, you know, you see you on all platforms wearing ma many different hats, but yeah. still keeping the brand alive. Yeah, because I, I like to say that I'm a creative in the fashion industry. Yeah. Yeah. So doesn't mean I'm not creative in other areas. Exactly. It's just that I've, short, I've chosen to, to narrow down in the fashion into industry. Into the fashion yeah. industry. Yes. But, you know, let, before we get into your, your career, mm -hmm. I, I know that you are a loving wife, a loving mother. Um, let's talk about this. You know, we always see you as this, this you know, person ahead of the game, this trendsetter. Mm -hmm. But um, as a wife, do you believe in romance and red roses? Yeah, you'll be in a lot of trouble if you don't practice that. I'm a creative, remember? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes, so, yes. But uh, preferably effortlessly romantic, not the one you that is trying Forced. too hard. No. Yeah. yeah. You like I'm a realist at the end of the day. Ah, okay. Yeah. Do, but do you like to be surprised? Do you celebrate Valentine's Day? Mm, yes, I do. Okay. Because my husband likes to celebrate them. Okay. I appreciate because it's, it's a love gesture and stuff like that. But I don't mark the day. I okay. don't dwell on the days, yeah. no. Because every single day of romance is better than one red day. I, yeah. I completely yeah. agree. Yeah. And I've seen you with your teenagers, mm. you know. You make it look just so easy. Motherhood looks so easy. My, my children are growing. Mm. And I'd like to take um, some advice. <laughs> Because I know we're going to get yeah. into the teen years. Yeah. And you guys, you know, you're like best friends. No, we are very close with each other. I think yeah. maybe naturally we are the emotional connecting type. So we we lean on each other, even regardless of the distances. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's also it's intentional because I've tried to make sure that I, I've incorporated their lives into my lives. Therefore, there's no mommy time yes. and work time. Okay. Those two blend in wow. very well. Yes, yes. And you treat them like, you know, they're their own individual people and... I tell them a lot. Okay. Actually, yeah, I would say everything. And because of that, they, we are friends, you know? And they carry some of the loads. They're like, okay, mom, what do we do? Yeah. Because actually very early in the day, I realized that instead of yelling at my kids to put on the, off the lights or to, you know, regularize, not yes. to waste tissue paper, or, you know, right. I let them take over some of those responsibilities. So we transfer money into the accounts in, in form of uh, in form of uh, allowances. Yes. And they, you know, each one of them allocate. I will take care of the house shopping. I will take care of the electricity bills. So they actually budget to do that. And they're the ones who are like, "Mom, you're not you're not switching the lights." Yeah. Because this, oh, it wow. cost me last yeah. month this amount of money. <laughs> you know. My so, allowance. Yeah. So because of that, we don't get to I don't get to disrespect them by yelling at them. 
because they understand they know what the areas um, of yeah that's that's profound mm. when did this start uh, in what, as, at what age as, okay it started um first of all I'll, let me relate this to pets i'm not a pet person mm, okay and i've always told my kids every time they're celebrating their birthday i'm like okay let's sit down so what are you getting off my rack now yeah what is that one thing that mommy will stop to do that's the only time I'll know that the difference between you and a pet. Mm -hmm. Because you take up responsibilities and make life easier yeah. for me. Then they go to a place and I was like, okay, now you guys are not babies. Mm -hmm. So you need to learn how to take care of us. Yeah. You understand? You need to call your dad every morning and find out how his day was. Or whether he has traveled, how is he? You know, check where my things are. Check if I'm all right. Take up something that I w I've been doing to you and yes. do it to me. So somehow as they grow up, we, we, we start folding into each other and taking care of each other more than me taking care of the kids. Wow. I actually think I'm the baby in the house right now. That's, <laughs> that's a good thing to be yeah. proud of, especially with how much hard work you yes. put into everything yeah. else. Yes. Um, do you think it's, it's um, something we're doing a, a wrong as parents when we think our children are an extension of ourselves in the sense that they're here to fulfill our dreams? Um, not just kids, everybody around you, because I believe we are human beings that are, are subject to a lot of external things. So you've got to be very conscious about what effect it has had on you and what you transfer to other people. Mm. The kids suffer because they're the ones that are within yes. your space. Yeah. But when you monitor, you'll realize those that are very conscious, they will protect the kids. But either the employees or somebody will get the effects of who you are. So I, would, I don't like to look at my kids as those are my kids. I like to look at them like, that is Philip, that is Joy, that's an individual. These are people. Yes, if I'm going to work very hard to be nice to my employee or my best friend, the first person to be nice to is this child. You know? Wow. Yeah. Your journey sounds extremely easy. It's like you woke up one day and you were like, this is what I'm going to do. This is where I'm going to start. Um, but you know, there. There are times where you've had a hard journey. Take us back to how you started and what are some of those challenges that you still remember till date? That, uh, hmm. One is being a creative in Kenya. I know. <laughs> hey, you know it. I know. <laughs> Why? Yeah. And I think it's, it's the most relevant in my space because from starting from thinking this is what I am, to not knowing that that's not what I should be, mm -hmm. to finding what I should be right. is, is already a long, hard journey. And that's because the first thing that a creative does is express themselves. Yes. They, they might not be speaking, but I could be touching something every day. I could be making someone's hair. Yes. All that is an expression of a creativity. So when I was growing up, I did a lot of everything that involved my hands, my hair, food, you know, mm -hmm. the one that's closest to you is the one that you, you, yes. you express yourself with. So nobody asked me what I wanted to be. Because it was obvious this chick is going to be a chef yeah. or something. It was obvious, you know. And um, I also knew the same. Yeah. So I finished high school straight into, into food and, and beverage related productions because oh, wow. that's what I did at home yeah. and set up people's, you know, <laughs> food in a certain way. And I did this for three years. I went to school for three years to study food and beverage. Wow. And then um, when I finished, um, I was so sure <laughs> that I don't want to work in this industry. Okay. I was 100% sure, yet I loved to do what I did. So you studied food and beverage and yes. you can't make a chapati. <laughs> you see, that's a problem. <laughs> that's actually the first thing because I was like, okay, how do I do this? And I hate peeling potatoes, I hate cutting meat, yeah. I hate yeah, cutting yeah, onions. Yeah. So you have to listen to yourself as well. Yes, huh. you have to. Be, but uh, when it comes to the garnishing and the setups and the creativity, the yes, vision, yes. A1. So what happened from food to fashion? Actually, in between there was hairdressing. Oh. <laughs> yes, because while I was waiting for my results, it was clear that my dad wanted me to go off to South Africa and study and further my, my, my food and beverage. Yes. yes. Well, until today, he blames it on the boyfriend, uh -huh. the, fr the fact that I didn't go on. Of course. <laughs> it's kind of right. <laughs> but in between, I, 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 because you don't want to let your young daughter free you know mm -hmm. maybe today people say maybe you, you want to do some computer courses so yeah. then my dad was like what do you want to do as you wait yes. for the results yeah. I said i don't know let me perfect hair cutting stuff yeah. like that. so i went to labelle fashion yeah. hairdressing mm -hmm. <laughs> school that time to pass that <laughs> basically to yeah. just have one but come out of there with something so when this was happening 
one of my friend's sister, I, I, I got to hear that she was struggling with her rent. And she was like, okay, I'm running a tailoring shop. I wish I could get someone who can do hair. Oh, nice. And help me with the yes. rent. Yeah. So my dad um, was very close to my sister and I and our, my brothers. Whenever we got home, he wanted to hear everything about your friends, what you're doing the whole day. And I'm like, there's this girl who is actually struggling with, my dad was like, oh, interesting. Go check how much I'm machine. Mm -hmm. I'll set up the salon for you. I'm like, really? Oh, wow. So I went, got the basics of a salon, two minutes. I had <laughs> school and a business. And of course, all my friends came to do their hairs for free because <laughs> <laughs> I had no business sense then. Yes. But the funniest thing is I spent more time unpacking the tailoring stalls issues than my own. Right. And that's when I, the first engagement with fabric, with fabric and, you know, and thread and needles. Yes. Yeah. Now, the funniest thing is when we, because we're both now dating and, you know, just getting off, she needed to move on because she was getting married. Mm -hmm. You know, she actually moved on and I moved out of there and now set up a, fa a tailoring shop and a salon. Oh, wow. That's how I got into fashion. I would like to you. Of course, by then I was married. So, and I don't like telling people to do things that I don't know how to do them. Yes. So I told my husband then, I'm going back to school to do fashion. I remember my mom saying, you're throwing away your money. She can't even put a baton. She cannot even replace <laughs> a baton. You have money to waste. Send her to school. So I went to school when I was actually expecting. Oh, That's when wow. I do, went to do fashion. That's how I walked into fashion. But before then, I was uh, beautifully doing wedding cakes and everything to do with food. And was fashion... Yeah. Just easy. No. It wasn't easy, especially when you have a bigger mind. Like I always do. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people who say, okay, I'm here. What's next? 24-7. Mm -hmm. And I knew getting there had many challenges beyond my wanting to be a fashion designer, my knowing how to do fashion. I wanted fashion that changes people's, my life, people's lives. You know, not just that one thing when... One day you'll say you, you used to be this and you're done. Yeah. Yes. So since then I started now figuring out which is the best way and I pushed putting challenges in front of me and, and, and jumping over them and going to the next one. It's been a long journey. And what's it like to be now a boss and a decision maker? Hey. <laughs> you're making big calls, tough decisions. Um, it's, it's, it's a responsibility that comes to your shoulders especially when you know when you're you're also a brand mm -hmm. so because it's it's a very thin, thin line between protecting your name yes. and running the business and everything else that comes with i don't stand for this yes you know this is a business decision you're driving me off my brand mm -hmm. line you know so it's 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 choosing to your brain <laughs> it's a lot of work yeah it's a lot of so how do you become that person? Like, what's the process where you have to make these decisions and you have to stay by them? Because even being a creative, mm -hmm. um, it's it's not always you're not always that business because you know we creatives are emotional. Yes. And when you're a business person, it's more just yeah, this is the way it is. Yeah. I will tell you something. I had to go to school to learn the other side. Ah. I was a creative for very long. That means getting attached to fabric. I don't want to cut it. I don't want to <laughs> sell it. You know all those stories that come with being a creative where you're yeah. too emotional to even price it properly. Yes. And uh, I really immersed myself into that space. Unfortunately, I suffered a burnout. And that's when the scare came through. You know, that's when the scare came through. Because I did not know that I would one day hate what I do. You know, because wow. I, it's, everything about me is what I love. And yes. it's fashion. Yeah. So I... Started hating it. I started hating it. And then what happened? Then I did not want to see any woman telling me, oh, my, my wife's like, I, I, I just switched off completely, actually. I switched off, yes. Then I, when I told my husband, I'm going to the UK. Mm -hmm. When I come back, I will decide whether to stay with fashion or become a farmer <laughs> and make you happy. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> so when I came back, I told him, okay. Fashion it is. No, farming. Farming it is. Wow. I give it a shot. So you've also you got green like, fingers. I got, I think, actually kind of did it better than I did fashion. Because I, because I don't like the, the, the background part. I have no business with when it rains and 
mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. it grows and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But being able to look at it from the outside and, and where to position the product and where yes. to sell it and distribute is what I chose to do for, for, for his farming business. Yes. And in exactly three months, we had five tons of bananas coming into Nairobi from Meru, from our farm. Wow. Yes. But I woke up one morning and I realized these bananas only wear yellow dresses <laughs> and I'm bored. <laughs> yellow is so boring. Yeah, I'm like, hey, you guys, you need to change to, you know, get evolved and, you know, fashion sense. And I switched off. I realized, Mm-mm, that's not me still. I'm actually almost living someone else's dream, mm-hmm. not mine. I thought I'll balance. I thought I'll keep this a bit on the side. But So I decided to go to back to school. I said, go to school. So you keep on educating yourself every yes, step yes, of the way. I read a lot. I read a lot. I read a lot. So you went back to school now? I went. Um, I was actually looking. I wasn't going to school. I was looking for somewhere to go. Okay. And while away time. Yes. But luckily, at the same time, I was, I was reading. I was looking to read. I was looking to, my mind was looking sucking to read. So um, it so happened that at the same time, the owner manager program in, in Strathmore, somebody had given in my name and they continuously called me. And I remember going to the interview because they're insisting that I go. Yes. And I did not prepare like anybody else I did. I just went and gave them the stories of how bored I am about my work. And mm-hmm. I think that's, where I, that's what got me in. Wow. Then um, by December, I had the acceptance letter, but I was like, what is all this? Mm. So when I got that moment of not wanting to, be, to, to do farming at all, I said, you know what, where do I go? I said, oh, there's a school that wanted me to, <laughs> to do something. something. <laughs> so, I, so I remember going for the opening, whatever. And then I told the lady, you know what? This is a lot of money. I can't pay this fees. She says, Carol, you're in. We'll figure out what to do. You know, there was, she never gave me a reason. To say no. To say no, because I remember the application fee. I said, oh, there's no parking. I will wait for you at the parking. <laughs> oh, I can, I'll come and pick it up. You know? She, you know? Wow. So I, when I went the first week of orientation, I was like, oh, my God. My brain opened up again. I was like, you know, this is the right place. Mm. But when I was going there, I just wanted a quiet corner. People that I don't know, mm-hmm. I just wanted to get away from what I do and just be in some new space. And that's, that really changed my life. Oh, my goodness. It really changed my life. That's so, so fascinating. So how yes. do you consistently remain true to your brand? And how do you, as Carol, stay unique? Because every, each one of us, Pinky, is uniquely made. Yes. I am I'm a very unique personality. One of the things I do is I don't even try to be anyone else. Mm. You understand? So I do what works for me. And if it works for me, then it will work for my brand. I've got to be very comfortable in it. And that's why most of my collections start from me. They start from yeah. something. If I can't wear it, I'll put it together and I'll tell you, Pinky, you look so funny. Where are you going with that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes, and yet I put it together. So I, I follow my... I follow my path. Okay. So it, it's then I don't have to struggle and being that's such someone a simple else. Yes, equation. it's so easy. It's very easy. Yeah, I think a lot of us yeah. try and um, we're we're trying to we're hankering after something that it's so exhausting. When we just need it. to listen to ourselves. It's so exhausting. There's no point. Yeah. Our generation, mm-hmm. we're seeing a lot of digital. Everything is going online. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, for my age group, it's still difficult to mm. convince people to be online or to understand being online. Mm. Um, for you, I know you jumped on that bandwagon. I know you understand it. Mm. But what can you tell people who are watching, who may need to understand why you believe in the digital platform so much? I, I Listen, I'm 48 years old, mm-hmm. so I'm right at the borderline of... Just getting old. And being old. <laughs> no, my kids no. already call me old. But 40 is I mean, the new 30. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I have always put, first of all, because of just what I told you earlier about my kids, I've always surrounded myself with my kids a lot. Yeah. If you surround yourself with someone who's younger mm-hmm. or people who are younger, then they bring the newness in you. Then if you surround yourself with people who are much older, they bring wisdom into your life. So I've always had those two sets of people in, in me. And I don't believe in... Uh, that's not for me. Oh, I'm too old. Oh, I don't know how to learn. Mm. A parent is saying, teach me how to do that. Oh, how did you do that? How did you show me how to do it? I can't click, but I'll try. So I have the willingness to do it. When you look at us, we're on the cross border. We're just on the cross borders of understanding. It's a bit hard to understand digital, 
but it's also easier for us to understand digital. Yes. I don't know if you understand. That. I yeah. If you understand. make an effort, you'll understand. Yes. It. If you choose not to, then you will be on yeah. the other side. When you do what I do, you worry a lot about succession. Yeah. And and uh, what what happens to what you've put together all these years. Yes. And honestly, anybody who does not embrace the digital space, then you're going to be obsolete very fast. So if you're aware that the future is where it is, combined with a um, lack of very little time, we have no time anymore. Mm -hmm. Our kids are global, they're going away. Yeah. If you know that you want to be connected with them, you want to find more time for yourself or self-love, then you know the only thing to do is to impress the digital space because you gain more time. Yes. It simplifies most of the things that... True, true. You know, like walking to the bank, reading a really new a really <laughs> newspaper, you know, just like simple things in life, <laughs> virtual now, you know, yes. look at this. Yeah. It just gives you more time. It's cheaper. Mm -hmm. If you just look at it that way, then you'll stop looking at it like a, a roadblock in your life. Then now you look at how to do it, embrace yeah. it and take it in. What makes your heart full, Carol? Hey. <laughs> um, that, okay, that's the most sensitive thing about my life. Yes. Is I like to share what I've got to do, which is my talent. Yes. And um, I, 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 I get very fulfilled when I'm able to use it to empower someone. Mm -hmm. You understand? Or inspire someone. Yes. Or give someone hope. That's amazing. Yeah. And I think you do that. You do that so much. Yes. You're such a kind, caring, compassionate person as much as, much as you are, you know, the business side of mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. who's very diligent, who, who has a sort of vision and mm -hmm. you, you know what you want. What is the one, one thing? You know, you've done so many things. What's the mm -hmm. one thing you are most proud of? Mm -hmm. Being able to one day be on some high-end fashion or mm -hmm. catwalk. Mm -hmm. The following day, being um, in a manata in, in Kajiado. And yeah. I really don't care how I look like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's, yeah. I'm, so, I'm happy to be able to swing from that level. Yeah. Today. You're adaptable. Yes. It just flows. It's never so that serious. Easily. Yes. Wow. Mm. If you're watching us on Facebook, make sure you comment. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Remember, if you have your phone near you, all you need to do is grab it and dial in star 544 hash. Okay. And reply with zero and you could win uh, 200 MB just for 20 bob for on YouTube. Thanks to Safaricom. These conversations are brought to you by SBM Bank. And um, Carol and I would love to hear from you. We'd love to know what you thought about this conversation and um, maybe comment on sure. something that you've seen mm. Carol wearing or myself, or what this looks like. I think these are fabulous. And I yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, that's our new uh, Blanchetti collection. Yeah. Um, it's for this season. But like we know that Kenya is not um, very seasonal dreamy. Yes, yes. It can be. It can roll all the way into December. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I know. It can sometimes easily. like in May or yes. even December sometimes it's freezing. It's actually freezing. Or even September in the evening. You're yeah. going out at night. Yes, yes. It's very easy right, to put this right. on. Carol, it's thank you so much. Thank yes. you for your light, for being here, for just being everything you are and for giving mm. yourself to um, all of us, you know, <laughs> your fans. Asante sana. You thank look you. good. Thank you. Yes. I'm so happy <laughs> that I received this. <laughs> Thank you for, very much for watching Pinky TV. We'll see you again real soon.
reckon with.